person-centred therapy explained. Hi, I'm Rory and in this video you will learn about the founder of person-centred therapy, the philosophical underpinnings of person-centred therapy, the psychological school that is the root of person-centred therapy, what PCT is effective for, the PCT counselling approach, the PCT process of change and the advantages and disadvantages of person-centred therapy. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And don't forget, underneath this video, in the comments, you can get a free PDF handout and lots of information. Go and click it. So the founder is American psychologist Dr. Carl Ransom Rogers. He was born in 1902 and he died in 1987 and he's considered the father of client-centred therapy, also referred to as person-centred therapy. Well, working as a child psychologist at the Society of the Prevention of Cruelty to Children in Rochester, New York, in the 1930s, he developed the idea of listening to the person rather than analysing them. So what are the philosophical underpinnings of person-centred therapy? Person-centred therapy finds its philosophical roots in phenomenology, the philosophy of lived experience or being in the world. German philosopher Edmund Husserl developed a theory which was later redefined by another German philosopher, Martin Heidegger. Rogers believed that individuals were living life on other people's terms and were withholding, muting or pushing down their own emotional needs to please others. He called this process introjected values and conditions of worth. So let's have a look at the psychological school that person-centred therapy belongs to. Person-centred therapy can trace its roots to humanism, sometimes referred to as the third force in psychology, a term coined by psychologist Abraham Maslow, known for, of course, his hierarchy of needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So what is person-centred therapy effective for? Well, PCT can help with depression, self-esteem issues, difficult transitions in life, bereavement and relationship issues. So let's have a look at the counselling approach. Person-centred therapist will help a client accept themselves and trust in their inner voice, which is referred to as the internal locus of evaluation. Using the attitudes of empathy, congruence and unconditional positive regard, the therapist provides the conditions for the client to heal and grow. Now don't forget to click in the comments bar below to get your free PDF downloaded handout on person-centered therapy and visit our page on our website for lots more information. So what's the process of change in person-centered therapy? Well person-centered therapy harnesses the client's natural self-healing process. Given the right relationship with the therapist clients can decide what they want to do with their lives. To this end, person-centred therapy is a personal growth model, also known as non-directive therapy. The client is not taught the model of therapy or asked to undertake homework. And don't forget to click in the comments bar below to get your free handout on person-centred therapy. So what are the advantages of person-centred therapy? Well, the client's individuality is the essence of person-centred therapy. Instead, the client gets to decide what to work on and how to go about the process. The approach ignores diagnosis, unconscious process and developmental theories. So what are the disadvantages of person-centred therapy? Well, the therapy lacks the structure of more directive therapy and may not suit all clients. It relies on the ability of the therapist to form and sustain the therapeutic relationship and the approach ignores diagnosis, unconscious process, 
and developmental theories, which is the advantage of person-centred therapy as well. So both advantages and disadvantages lie in this last paragraph. So finally, don't forget to click in the comments bar below to get your free handout on person-centred therapy. And as always, thank you for watching.